So if AI is gonna change the world, what does the user interface look like when that happens? And so welcome to AI Insights with John Rose. Uh, I'm here with Laura Lee from Dauntless XR uh, to, to talk about that. Uh, you know, Laura Lee, uh, many people might not be familiar with Dauntless XR. Why don't you give us a little bit of update about what you're working on, and then we'll have a discussion about this, this, this fundamental question. What does the user interface look like? Well, how does the user experience change? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. At Dauntless, we make AI-enabled mixed reality applications, and we make kind of two flavors of apps. One that takes human-generated data and displays it, and we've layered in some really cool AI into that. And then another one that takes machine-generated data and creates an immersive digital twin, and that has its own integration of AI that goes along with it. So, you know, and the reason for that second one is that we're producing an awful lot of machine-generated data these days, and we most of them, we were trying to emit it in traditional tools. And, and you know, it's very hard to kind of understand complex data without a different approach. It is, yeah. it is. It's, it is really difficult, and even the people that, that has been their job for years and years to go and parse these very dense data sets, it's even hard for them. So now, you know, we have so many more people dealing with lots of different kinds of data, uh, it can really help to have it visualized and presented in a way that's a little bit more natural for a, a human to understand. You, you had shared with me I think, earlier the, uh, uh, some examples of how people, like industries that are using this and how this is going to get applied. What are, what are some of the, 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 the kind of early use cases of people doing it this way? Yeah, uh, one of the really cool projects we worked on was with NASA, where we yeah. took all of their satellite data from the heliophysics fleet. So these are satellites that are monitoring the sun. And we bought all of that data in, uh, integrated it, parsed it, and then we spun it up into a mixed reality session um, that anyone can jump into and at any point in time see what the sun is doing pretty much real time. It takes a little while for the information to get from the satellites to Earth. but. Yeah, that was one of the examples, and it's very intuitive once you get in there. Even if you don't have a degree in astrophysics or heliophysics, you can you can understand what's going on. That's cool. It's probably a, a lot of areas where people are surrounded by data mm -hmm. and have absolutely no idea how to navigate it, and think that the, the the action is to actually eliminate a bunch of the data. It doesn't sound like you're eliminating any data. You're just making it usable. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. One of the first things we say when we start working with a customer who you know wants to do all these great things with their data is odds are you have plenty of data already that you're not getting a full ROI from that you might be able to kind of get more juice out of if you're using kind of the right tools. And then, like you said, a lot of the time there's there's data you're not even touching that you probably don't need. So I was, we always caution customers like don't go out and start generating more data if you're not already using everything you have. Yeah, that's very consistent with a theme that we've talked about a, a lot here, which is an AI project that's just kind of an interesting adventure is less significant than an AI project where you have a target to achieve some level of ROI. Mm -hmm. And you know, any tool and technology that can actually unlock ROI is probably worth doing if it changes your business trajectory. Uh, one of the things that was interesting about your world was it's almost this paradox is that to do what you want to do, which is to unlock and access the kind of data sets that are being created in the AI world, it turns out you have to use AI to do that. And so, and, and not just at high level, but embedded into the actual product. And so where are all the insertion points of AI into your actual product and the system that, you're, that people are using? Yeah, it actually ends up being a little bit meta because we used AI to integrate the AI. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, one of the first things we did as soon as we were able to is we layered in computer vision and what ends up being object recognition into our Katana app. So when you put on this mixed reality headset and you're, you're looking at our application, uh, we run a computer vision model that is detecting live what you're looking at and can help give you um, more contextually relevant information based on what, what you're seeing. And yeah, the, the meta part is, of this is that we used AI to help build this new AI interface. So there's AI <laughs> designing the system, and then there's models embedded in the system to do computer vision and to express the information. Hey, sounds perfectly good to me. I mean, more AI is good, and it, you know, and I think this is actually an early indicator of how most AI 
evolution is going to happen, that as you start the flywheel mm -hmm. and use the technology, maybe to develop a better product, you realize that the actual technology could help the product be better. And exactly. now it starts to, to kind of continue on. The other interesting thing with your world is, you know, a lot of the time we talk only about generative AI, which is very useful, but you're kind of a hybrid and traditional AI. You, you can't do this without computer vision models and kind of pre-gen AI systems. Yeah, exactly. That's that's one of the things when people first hear that we're, we've you know, integrated AI, they're like, okay, well, how do I talk to the LLM? And it's like, it's actually, we're doing, we're doing images, not words. Yeah. So we're using a CNN instead. And yeah, that it, it's, I think it predates LLMs. It's been yes. around a little bit longer. And then, you know, on the uh, data integration side, we have our own machine learning algorithms that we had to, you know, make the old fashioned way to, to get the data to all integrate and play nice together. Yeah. Well, we, we've said, you know, there's three AI markets. There's the uh, the training market, which is the big mega clusters, mm -hmm. and there's the generative market, and then there's the, what we call the pre-gen AI AI market. And I've said for all, you know, for quite a while that all three of them are expanding and growing dramatically. Yes, exactly, and it, it's an important step to go out and, and do that education when you're talking to end users and customers. Be like, by the way, there's more than just this one set that you're used to hearing about. We have we have other levers we can pull as well. Well, we had uh, we had your system here at Dell Technologies yeah. World, and uh, we'll we'll post some links to it so people can kind of see this stuff. It's uh, it's you know again, what's the user experience going to be? Well, you know, we're kind of used to it being a chatbot and things today, but that is not the end state. The end state is rich, immersive experiences. I think. That's what we believe. That's what we're betting on, that the way people interact with, a with AI day to day is probably going to be through some kind of XR interface. And, you know, we're getting more lightweight glasses, smart glasses coming onto the market now. And we will we will 100 percent be utilizing those as best we can. But, yeah, like I said this morning, it's kind of ironic and funny in a way that we have this massive leap in Technology, technological advancement, and we decided that the best way to interact with it is through this like chat bot, right. chat room interface. Yes. But you know, it gets the job done. You know, it, it's you know, we, we've hit some limitations on it. I'm sure anyone's been on Chat GPT, and you start typing, you're like, okay, where was that conversation I had? Where where did this yeah. go? It's kind of a, it's kind of an, an allegory of you know, look, this is really actually very simplistic interfaces. Mm -hmm. And that's great. It, it's a simplistic interface that does amazing things. Mm -hmm. Imagine if it wasn't a simplistic interface doing amazing things. It was an amazing interface doing amazing things. Yeah. Yep. So, Lorelei, great, oh. great to have you. I mean, uh, we'll post some links to your stuff, and people can see this. But you know, the the, the meta point is, look, AI is going to evolve in terms of intelligence and capability, but it, we'd be foolish to think that it's not going to also evolve in terms of user experience. So, thanks for joining us. It's uh, good stuff. Mm -hmm.